call on Government Order of the Day number seven. New Zealand Business Number Bill interrupted debate on second reading. Members, when we were last debating the second reading of the New Zealand Business Number Bill, Jacinda Ardern had the call and has three minutes, 30 seconds remaining if she wishes. Thank you, Mr uh, Speaker. Jacinda Ardern. Mr Speaker, it's been an absolute education to sit in on the tail end of that last debate and learn what causes on that side of the House a mild cardiac infarction from their various members. And it's one of two things. It's one of two things. Either mention of Labor's positive economic record or mention of the dire state of the Crown books by virtue of that government being in power. And the fact that we have $78 billion worth of debt, and as my colleague rightly pointed out, debt that would make Muldoon blush, is obviously the cause of great embarrassment for members like uh, Chris Bishop, who seem to be very animated at any mention of the fact that Labor has a proud record of getting net Crown debt uh, down to almost zero when we were in government. And I might add on that, given that we're now talking about the positive record uh, of uh, working alongside small businesses, an excellent record of starting progress towards making sure that government was more aligned to the needs of small businesses in New Zealand. But one thing that we as a government at that time would acknowledge was that there was always more that could be done. There was always more that could be done. In this case, if the government on that bench is the best uh, job of identifying what more could be done for small businesses is a small business number, then we're in pretty poor space, Mr Speaker. Because as I talked about in my contribution earlier, getting the right people, having access to capital and making sure that businesses have time to build business plans and work on their own business are some of the three biggest challenges that small business face. And yet this, small, this business number, which we are supporting with heavy uh, concerns, uh, does very little to address some of those key concerns. Because as I want to point out, Mr Speaker, as being pointed out by some of my members already, uh, the uh, this, uh, NZBN bill itself has a number of exclusions in it. And one of those important exclusions, one of those uh, areas of government that which will not be covered uh, by the number is local government. And if you ask any small business which department or interface with government they struggle with the most, local government will be raised. And yet there is an exclusion for local government here. Uh, where there are also concerns around the level of uptake. If we don't get a good level of uptake amongst small businesses for this number early on, there is the chance that we will just have a, 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 an extra identifier that is not properly integrated into existing government systems. And finally, the view from the Chartered Accountants of Australia and New Zealand uh, that the benefits for business may be overstated is not something that's lost on this side of the House. The better public service target the government has set for themselves around small business is what? Reducing the cost of compliance, and by compliance they simply mean form filling when it comes to their interface with government. Now if you look for instance at the cost of a business registering New Zealand, that's a pretty nominal cost, it's pretty small. The government has not set itself an ambitious target when it comes to genuinely helping small business. They could start by improving provisional tax, they could follow the New Zealand Institute of Business uh, of Chartered Accountants uh, policy, there is so much more they could have done. I call Simon O'Connor.